Well, hello again, everyone. Schoons Comics here with another exciting, oh so thrilling, comic book haul. Yes, I am back. Oh my gosh, it has been a minute. I have no excuses other than just, just lays. Sitting down to show this video of my, my fantastic comics. I just haven't made the time, and I'm sorry about that. But I'm here now. Here now to show a giant stack of comics and other goodies that I've purchased recently. And they're from all over, man. I got stuff from antique malls, from Ollie's, from Half Price Books, from a small local comic show. Nothing from a comic book shop, man. A couple things from eBay even, but nothing from a comic book shop. Comic shops in my area have just kind of dried up and... I don't know, it's just funny to me that I get, like, I'll go in there for supplies. And that's about it. So we're crazy. All right, well, let's jump in, shall we? The very first thing I'm pretty excited about, it's my first L.B. Cole cover. I have wanted something from L.B. Cole for a while now. I need to get back, you'll see, I need to get better stuff. But the local antique mall had Overstreet Price Guide. What year is this from? 87? 89. Overstreet Price Guide. Superman cover by the great artist L.B. Cole. Always has a signature down there. Can you see that? L.B. Cole. He does all these crazy colors, very vibrant. I love his art, and I, I his books are usually very high priced, or if they're in my price range, very bad condition. So I found this for four dollars, and I was really excited to find it. Plus, going through these old overstreets is really interesting. Just so fun. If you had a time machine, right, and could buy these books for these prices, oh my gosh. So yeah, my first L.B. Cole cover, $4. I knew this book had to come home with me. Speaking of books that were cheap and had to come home with me, it's that Ollie's. And my Ollie's, most, I don't know if your town has an Ollie's. Uh, mine used to be a Toys R Us. And it's just crap everywhere, just stuff. And their comic selection... Um, to say hit or miss would be very generous. But they had a bunch of new trade paperbacks and hardbacks a couple weeks ago, including one copy of Captain America Golden Age Omnibus Volume 1. This thing retails for $125. They had it for $37. And I, I had to. I had to get this. This is amazing. This is the first 12 issues of Captain America. Jack Kirby, goodness. Joe Simon. Yeah, I, I've only read through a couple of issues. Um, Captain America smokes a lot, smokes a pipe. I found that very interesting. But, man, it always, it always pays to check in with Ollie's. because, And I'll tell you what, they had a bunch of Marvel milestones. Nothing that I wanted, like stuff like Dazzler and Black Panther, like leader runs, real oddball stuff. But they had like 20 of those, and they were gone. Like, this is like on a Wednesday I went, my lunch hour. Went there over the weekend, all that stuff was gone. All of it. So, very happy I grabbed the only copy of this that they had. So that's really exciting. All right. How about some comic books in this comic book hall, huh? A key for me, and we all know, I love me some Bronze Age Marvel. And my shirt kind of has uh, this color scheme. Amazing Adventures, number 18, first appearance of Kill Raven. Got this from a local comic show. They had some deep discounts. I think I only paid like $11 for this. It's not perfect, but it, it presents really well. And it's a key I didn't have. I always pick up Bronze Age Marvel, which is becoming more and more expensive. Even just common issues. If they're in good shape, they're pricey, man. So, very cool book. Very happy to have it. The worst costume in comics by far. Oh my gosh, but awesome. All right. Um, pick this up. Again, this is the local, I always call it local yokel. The local yokel comic book show. Every quarter um, they come to the town. Local hotel, one, one room, and this one dealer pretty much dominates it. He's the one that hosts the event, and he has all these long boxes, 30 long boxes, and they're basically five for a dollar, right? You just, the more you buy, like I bought, I got this huge stack and I spent 20 bucks, okay? This was part of that stack. This is um, 
a wizard, one of those comics that came in Wizard Magazine. This is Open Space Zero. Just have some old Alex Ross art. So that was a cool, um, you know, Alex Ross, I'll pick stuff up if it's cheap. I love Alex Ross. Stuff's amazing. So that was a cool book. And I love giveaway comics, comics that were promotional things. And I found this one and I couldn't resist. Mickey Mouse and Goofy ex Explore Energy Conservation. Look at that. That is so goofy. <laughs> but it's great, right? Like, I don't... I don't know how to not buy things like this, if they're cheap. Like, if you find this, like, I know some people just pass this right by. They're so fun. You have to have fun with your comics, man. If you're just buying keys and speculating on books, all right. Like, yes, I of course, I just bought a, a key. But you got to get books that are fun, right? This is so fun. Oh, made me happy. Here is one. My girlfriend's a big Elf Quest fan. I'm. It's okay. I haven't really read much of it, but um, they had the first issue of the Marvel run of the Epic Comics run for five bucks. So I picked that up. Pretty cool. And then I found Logan's Run number one. Also kind of beat up, but George Perez art. George Perez. Um, those of you who haven't been following George Perez is dealing with some very serious health problems and I appreciate the man uh, and his art he's he's one of the great storytellers of all time and very happy to get Logan's run number one Bronze Age Marvel never seen the movie heard it's kind of goofy here's another book I've been meaning to read forever and this is like the latest version of this uh, this is Mage the Hero Denied issue one from Image Matt Wagner's Mage. I always hear good things about it. Kevin Smith always goes on and on about it. Kevin Matchstick, lead character here. I really don't know a ton about it, but they had like the first three issues of this. So I picked them up and give them a read. It's in my ever giant to read pile. Speaking of stuff I got to read, uh, first two issues here of Fantastic Four. I have no idea what volume anymore, uh, but Matt Fraction and Mark Bagley on Fantastic Four. This is a series that ran side by side with FF by Matt Fraction and Mike Allred, and I really enjoyed that series. So I picked up the first two issues of this from the quarter bin, so I'm happy to give those a read. Read, read Richards. <laughs> I am on fire today. I also like to pick up last issues. Um, gimmick I stole from Chris over at Read Comics, Read Comics 81. He was always picking up final issues. So I got Justice Society of America. Last issue of that, issue eight. You know, I like, you know what, and I don't pick up many currents, like in the last, when I say current, last 20 years or so, last issues of books, for the most part, because they don't have letter pages anymore. There's no big letter from the editor or the writer or anybody like, you know, oh, you had a great run. Thanks for supporting us all these issues. Want to thank such and such. It's a conversation. I miss that. And a lot of these last issues don't have that anymore. Um, but that one did. And speaking of last issues, I've been looking for this stupid book. <laughs> not not intensely, but here's FF number 16 that I was just talking about. Matt Fraction, Mike Allred on art. God, look how beautiful these comic is. I had this whole series except for the last issue. And it was one of those, like, well, I'll find it at a comic show. I'll dig it up. Ne never, never, never could find this thing. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. ah, editing. Good. Anyway. Finally found this in a dollar bin. I was like, yes, I can finally finish this story. I'm so goofy that I won't just buy it off eBay. So I'm like, eh, I, can, I know I'll find it. Five years later, found it. Here's the final issue. Oh, that comic just slid right off there onto the couch. But that's okay. Final issue of The Pulse. Big Jessica Jones fan, so that was pretty cool. And the last issue of Justice League America... I think you can see why it's last issue, because that is not the Justice League I know. I know fire. I think that's supposed to be ice. Uh, obsidian, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but that was right before Grant Morrison's run. It was the final issue, so that was pretty neat. But <laughs> I remember this book being really hot in the Wizard days, in the early 90s. This is Ultraverse Premier Zero. The Jim Lee cover. This set was like a mail away, if I recall, and I found this in the quarter bin. 
I said, oh my God, 1995, Brian, really would want this. So happy to pick that up for a quarter. And then, you know, again, I always love when I find comics I knew nothing about, right? Uh, this is a one-shot from 2009, Batman in Barcelona, Dragon's Night, by Mark Waid. I love Mark Waid. Here he's doing a Batman one-shot? Yeah. I picked this up for like a buck fifty, I think. So that's that's great. Fantastic. Last issue of Batman and the Outsiders. Very cool cover. I think I might have one of these already, but it was, again, in the five for a dollar box. So, yeah, I'll pick it up. Oh, and then I dug and I dug and I dug at this show. One of my one of my um, qualifiers for a successful comic show anymore is if I can come home with at least one DCU variant. You guys got almost 11 minutes into this video without me saying DCU variant. But there it was. And lucky for me, they had three at this comic show, the entire comic show. Again, it's just one room. But I only found three. I was happy to find them. They're not in the best of shape. But I didn't have any of them, so that was great. So Detective Comics 694. DCU logo variant. Look how pretty. I really need to get that on a t-shirt. Um, again, for those of you coming late to the party, I'm obsessed with these books. And I, mm, boy, I was at a comic thing this weekend, comic show this last weekend, and people, I found a few, but then I found more that a dealer had pulled out and was pricing, like eBay prices for these kind of things. 15 20 30 dollars i'm like oh no don't start discovering these these are no me cheap dollar bins but happy to find this again these were only available at toys r us walmart's rite aids things like that in discount bags we get like two comics for a price 20 comics for a price so they're real goofy and harder to find um so i was happy to get that and then I found, this one's really chewed up, but again, I didn't have it. Adventures of Superman 526, during the goofy long-haired Superman days. And then, what a weird one-shot this is. I didn't even know this existed. Superman Toy Man, playing rough, one-shot from 1996. Mm, DC Universe logo variant, though. I love some of these DC Universe logo variants, because like this one's got a little a rectangle around it. Like, and others don't. I just always wonder why. Like, what's the rhyme or reason to it, you know? But successful comic show, because I found three of those. Boy, I also went recently to, it was advertised as a sports card, comic, and collectible show. And it was at an auction house um, about a half hour from me. And I went there on a windy, gross, snowy Saturday morning, and it was a hole in the wall. And it was dirty and gross, and I loved it, because that means you can dig. And I didn't find a ton there. I found a couple cool things. But one of the things I pulled out, uh, Defenders of the Earth, number one, from Marvel, from the Star Comics line, newsstand edition. Uh, there's no, I don't think this will be a movie or anything. I just, I liked this cartoon a lot when I was a kid. And I'm always looking for Marvel stuff. The cartoon adaptations, the comic adaptations of these cartoons, I always find them fun. So to find that for, I think I paid two bucks for it in the dingiest bag I ever saw. Like, this thing was brown. It's like, Ooh. Oh, and they also had this one. I was really excited to find this. A little chewed up, but um, this book's been popular lately. Cause the TV show's coming back, apparently, on Disney+. Plus. X-Men Adventures, first issue... I think this is the first appearance of Morph, technically, so I think this one had a little juice for a while. But, yeah, I was happy to get that. I think I paid $3 for that. That was really exciting. Love this cartoon. Who didn't? Who's not humming that theme song in your head right now? Oh, my God. This also made this... that This is the same uh, weird little show. I've been looking for this comic cheap for forever because people want bigger money for it. My bigger, I mean $10 and up, and I don't want to spend that money on a comic that came out like a couple years ago. But DC did this big weird uh, crossover where they had their characters interacting with Looney Tunes characters, but the Looney Tunes characters were like, you know, as realistic as the DC characters. This is Batman and Elmer Fudd by Tom King. And it's great. <laughs> it's just great. He writes Elmer Fudd with his little voice. <laughs> and he says... And he's obsessed with Silver St. Cloud. It's great. If you and I, I've wanted this forever. Just, I found this in like a, a $2 box. 
And I was like, oh my gosh, this, this half hour drive was well worth it to get this comic. So funny. Oh man. Um, this is kind of an infamous comic and I saw this on somebody's video once and I don't remember who it might've been Metarog. I'm not sure. Uh, Spider-Man and Power Pack. Um, produced in cooperation with the National Committee for Prevention of Child Abuse. Uh, this is where we find out in flashback that uh, Peter Parker had some some scary adult characters in his childhood. And uh, yeah, you, you Google that one. Um, it's a little shocking. Um, it's not a graphic comic at all, but just the subject matter is like, oh my gosh. So, uh, yeah, I think I paid a couple bucks for this, but wow, that's something. And I keep chipping away at this, this run and this book is chewed up. Um, I keep trying to pick up these Marvel 25th anniversary covers. Those are so cool, right? Here's Conan. And I know some of these are really hard to find and expensive, so, you know, when I when I find ones I don't have, I pick them up if they're relatively cheap. And this was a buck. So, that's awesome. Half price books, man. I went to half price. So, I went to half price books a couple weeks ago. And they had the second ver uh, volume of FF. Maybe it was the first volume. I don't know. Where Spider-Man joins the Fantastic Four. Where we think Human Torch is dead for a while. So, Spider-Man's in there. Future Foundation. Okay. And it was like the first 12 issues of that. And I didn't buy it. I don't know why. And I was kicking. And then I got home. <laughs> I'm getting ready for work the next morning. And I remember I was brushing my teeth. And I was like, why didn't I buy those books? That was a good deal. Why didn't I buy those? That's, that's a good read. I should have picked those up. So I went that next day at lunch. This is like a Sunday, Monday morning. I, I, I went to work. At lunchtime, I ran out there to pick those books up. Son of a bitch, those things were gone. Somebody bought them already. Who else is out there hunting besides me? I uh, but I was fortunate because someone had just, um, I saw at the little table at half price, they, they are, I'm there so much. And those people, so they either love me or hate me. I know a couple of those people are annoyed because I come up to their table, the, the, the counter where you can sell things. And I'm always poking my head back there looking for uh, comics. And uh, or I'll ask, like, hi, have you got any comics back there? Anything I can take a look at? Majority of the people are very happy to let me look around. A couple of these ladies, uh, we haven't priced them yet. They're they're not happy, and they're they're correct. They're still they're not supposed to show them to me yet, I suppose. But with no harm in asking. But a couple of ladies I know get annoyed when I ask. Anyway, um, someone had just sold a short box, and I was allowed to go through it, standing like fresh. I hadn't even looked at it. Nothing really big in there, but there was the first eight issues of this series, and I already have the first issue i think a couple of times over but these are all buck 50 gotham city sirens okay paul dini uh writing here so i got first issue second issue and i think these are pretty popular i haven't priced them recently but yeah this one's by scott lobdell for some reason i don't know why third issue and the fourth i don't know who did that cover but fourth issue and the fifth. All the Harley Quinn fans out there getting all excited about these covers. Sixth issue and the seventh and the eighth. Buck fifty each. Not the FF books I wanted, but these are these are pretty cool. They also I haven't taken this one out of the bag yet. Uh, they had a chewed up copy of New Teen Titans 21, which I'm I'm pretty darn sure this is the first appearance of Brother Blood. Half price books, dollar fifty. Uh, very beat up, but key comic. Uh, George Perez again, dollar fifty. Oh yeah, I'll pick that up. All right, now is this what I got left here? Just a handful left here, people. I'm already at like 20 minutes. A lot of talking for me today. I think I'll grab my beverage again. So manly, right? Look, colors. Oh, well. So one of my pet projects, all my stuff is pet projects, I swear. I'm, um, I'm trying slowly but surely to pick up all the Jack Kirby covers from his run from Marvel in the 70s. When he came back from DC Comics, 
when he did Machine Man and Black Panther and 2001, a bunch of different books. But he got Devil Dinosaur. Uh, but he also did a bunch of covers, which is so interesting to me because it's also like him drawing Marvel characters you would never think. Like, and it'd be like, for nerd trivia, you know, has Jack Kirby ever drawn Moon Knight? Like, I don't think so. But then, you know, you find things. So I've been picking up these lately. Um, Fantastic Four 200. You know, this is, you know, Fantastic Four. He's done for forever. So, okay, cool. But still, Jack Kirby cover. <sighs> then there's this one, man. I got this one off eBay for cheap, and I love it. Uh, Marvel 2 and 127. The Thing versus Deathlock. Now, who knew Jack Kirby ever drew Deathlock? 70s Marvel character. There he is. Jack Kirby's own. That's great, man. So I was really happy to get that at a good price. I love that cover. And then he did um, three issues of Ghost Rider covers. And these are all kind of beat up. But, you know, it's Jack. Here's Ghost Rider 21. Jack Kirby's Ghost Rider. I just, I just want to picture the meeting where they're like, not the meeting, but the little snippet where I'm sure somebody's like, Jack, we need to draw Ghost Rider. And I'm wondering if they had to explain to him who Ghost Rider was. Skull, heads on fire. Like, All right, whatever. Um, that's, you know, that's just great Jack Kirby cover. And he also did issue 22. Again, these are all just cover work. He didn't do the interiors at all. And 23. Jack Kirby, Ghost Rider. So I'm picking those up more and more when I can find them on the cheap. That's a fun thing to collect. So lately, if a comic show has um, a DC Universe logo variant and a Jack Kirby Marvel 70s book I can come home with, I'm pretty happy. And then uh, one of my local antique malls here has always had the same selection of comics. I stop in there. So there's like there's like five antique malls all like on top of each other just over the border in Michigan. And two of them regularly have new inventory of comics. So I stop in there quite a bit. Too, too much, quite frankly. Um, but the other ones I stop maybe once a month just because they don't usually have... They have a few comics, but it's always the same stuff. Well, lo and behold, one of those comics plays... Uh, one of those uh, antique malls got a new booth. They always said the thing. You gotta go, you gotta hunt because they get new booths. And this guy had comics, like five long boxes. I'm like, oh, yes. Fresh. <laughs> Fresh to me. And they had this one. Uh, Fantastic Four 92. Jack Kirby's run with Stan Lee on the Fantastic Four. I have a handful of the Fantastic Four, which are the real keys. And this one was a little bit more money than I wanted to pay. It's 20 bucks, but I'm, you know, I want to support the local, local people selling their comics and encourage them to continue doing so. Uh, it's a little beat up, but, you know, Fantastic Four, Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, you really can't go wrong. So, 20 bucks for that one. And then the last book I'm going to show. This is so cool. Um, <laughs> this is Navy Combat number 19. I think this is from 1951. Well, anyway. So here we go, and it's got, the cover has all these various comic artists and Stan Lee as these crewmates, right? Who we got on here? We got, uh, God, I forget everybody's first names. George Ward, Joe Manley, Mainly, Man Ely, and Joe Severn. I saw that Stan Lee one for sure, and I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. So I picked that up. This cost me 15 bucks, but a really cool comic. Um, and, an, you know, pre-Marvel Marvel, Marvel uh, book here. These war books from the 50s are always really fun to find. So that's a really cool book. I, I, liked, I liked when the... I like when comics have a little personality, and I like that they assigned people in the Marvel bullpen or just people in the industry, that they put them on the cover here, and I thought that was pretty cool. So, so that's what I have this time, guys. I have, I have a giant stack of books to show, but I'm not doing that now. 
Uh, I gotta have some fodder for maybe it'll take maybe it'll be less than a month before I post another video. Wouldn't that be amazing? So hopefully I'll be back soon and show those off. I got a lot of cool stuff. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Leave comments. Let me know your thoughts, and I will see y'all soon.